101. All right. Good morning, everyone. Cole here. Um, thanks for joining us for another episode of Zoom to Adventure. Today, we have uh, Cup of Joe with CEO. How are you doing today, Wayne? Good, good morning. Thanks, everybody, for, uh, for joining us. Yeah. So, um, Wayne, are you ready to hop on into it? You want to go ahead and start giving us some updates? Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's get into it. All right, guys. So we have a little outline here of uh, things, things we want to talk about. You guys are welcome to uh, ask questions in the chat box. Those questions will come straight to me. Uh, we'll try to get to uh, all the uh, questions we can uh, in the little bit of time we had this morning. And then um, we do want to also make sure you keep your camera and your microphone off as it can be distracting to the presenter. So uh, the first thing on our list here is uh, opening guidelines. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I know a lot of you um, have been asking, uh, either calling or emailing, um, as you should be, about uh, what we're doing for opening guidelines. And we realized uh, several months ago when we were creating our own guidelines for sanitizing and social distancing uh, and uh, service that uh, a lot of destinations were probably going to be asking for these uh, to, to, uh, create their own certifications. So we, we started creating them with, uh, with that in mind, making sure that they were outlined and detailed. Uh, and it's really helped us, um, uh, today in that every time a destination says, okay, here's our, our opening, uh, guidelines for certification, we're able to immediately submit, uh, everything they they've asked for. And actually a lot of the stuff we do are above and beyond like, aerosol sprayers uh, between charters in the room so you get behind all the all the nooks and crannies uh, and, and immediately get um, uh, uh, certifications and compliance with with every destination's um, opening. Uh, some destinations have uh, uh, asked uh, for everybody to wear masks which are fine. Uh, we do uh, recommend that you uh, maybe get a neck gaiter instead of a mask uh, that's going to be much easier to uh, to wear uh, when you're going to, going to eat. You can just pull it down. Don't have to take it off. Put it somewhere. Put it in your pocket. Touch it um, all over. Um, we just think it'd be uh, a little more sanitary um, to uh, to keep it on yourself. And then when you go diving, it's easy just to pull off and and put in some kind of non-porous bag, like a baggie or something, so that um, anything that's on that mask stays within that bag. And then keeping it in your personal space. But we think a neck gaiter is, is a, a much better way uh, to go. It also is easier at night. Every time you uh, go to sleep, you can you can rinse it out in the sink put it with some sanitizer they were providing and, and hang it up to dry um, to wear the next morning. Uh, we do have, uh, uh, for those destinations that don't have a covered boarding area, we, we have purchased canopies that are out on the, the dock in the boarding areas, uh, along with adding a hand washing station. So as customers come up, we have the uh, social distancing marked off on the, on the dock or, or boarding area. Uh, we take your temperature. Uh, we ask you a few medical questions about your history of, um, of illnesses uh, or um, uh, fevers and ha ask you to wash your hands and then we proceed with the uh, with the boarding procedure uh, most of the uh, Destinations where we dive off of the mother vessel. We've we've um, uh, Removed every other tank so that even when you're setting up um, you you have the distance between you and uh, and uh, uh, Another diver now obviously if you're diving with your family uh, or spouse, you know, you're welcome to put your tanks together to help each other out um, we do know that COVID testing is required in most destinations, and it's uh, an issue for some people uh, in the U.S. And, and even more so for people outside the U.S. Uh, with, uh, with CVS doing um, a lot of testing in their thousands of locations, they announced this morning that most of their facilities, test facilities, have caught up and are doing now um, three-day turnarounds. Uh, if you are close to your state's um, health uh, university that's guiding um, the, the response for your state, most of those are doing it uh, with a one-day turnaround. And then, of course, there's some, some rapid tests that's available in some areas. <clears throat> we do know that some people um, uh, uh, are taking five to seven days. A lot of the destinations are five or less for a negative test before boarding the flight to that destination. So it's, you know, this is going to be a, an ongoing concern that um, if you want to go on a trip, you know, you just need to make sure that uh, you look at the guidelines we have 
online and you find a testing facility that can, can work within that. Uh, some of the foreign countries, uh, testing is not even available uh, if you don't have symptoms. Uh, we have some customers in the UK that have told us, uh, unless it's changed, but in the last couple of days, they've told us that unless uh, you uh, have symptoms, you just can't get a test because you want to go on holiday. Uh, and that's obviously uh, going to be a, a concern if uh, you're going to a destination that's going to require it. Not all of them are requiring it, but uh, majority are, and we don't foresee that changing uh, anytime, anytime soon. Okay, great. Now, say someone is taking a three-day test and because uh, they're hoping to come to, to one of our, our trips. Um, are you wanting those folks to kind of uh, stay um, semi-quarantined before they come? down to the to our boats while they're waiting to hear back on their their results well I, i'm not saying that you should quarantine but don't change your routine you know i wouldn't go out to uh, any large gatherings uh or or change anything that you have been doing that's kept you safe so far okay and say say if someone does have a uh temperature uh when they get there to the dock what's the protocol for that uh, well, whether you uh, sh you you um, arrive with a temperature or something uh, occurs during the charter, every destination has a medical facility that we can call, ask them, uh, ask the, the medical um, specialist uh, about your symptoms, and they can determine if uh, it's uh, potential symptoms for for uh, something that needs to be checked out, and we can we can uh, get you to that medical facility and have them check you out, uh, and of course. Um, uh, keep uh, keep you away from the other customers and guests um, until we can get you off the boat um, uh, to them. And then if they check you out and you're fine, then, you know, let's just get back to diving. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, destinations that are currently opening and trips that are currently running? So the ones that are currently opening, uh, the Red Sea is uh, opening. They are uh, at a reduced capacity, 50% through August. Uh, we suspect September, uh, possibly October, but right now September they're um, uh, eliminating that. But right now it's 50%, so it's easier to uh, social distance while you're on board. And that includes uh, the Nile Queen. So all of Egypt is uh, open and uh, happy to, to have uh, tourists come over there. Okay. Uh, Turks and Caicos Aggressor, they've been out on several charters. Uh, they're doing very well over there with um, the uh, visibility and, and uh, uh, the uh, diving for, um, for uh, Northwest Point and uh, some of the areas closer to, uh, to where we dock. Uh, guests have been very happy, not only because of the good diving, but just to get back underwater. Uh, and the destination is doing very well. Uh, the Maldives Aggressor, uh, Maldives are open. Uh, and again, all these guidelines um, to make sure you comply with them are on our website under on the homepage under travel updates. And um, uh, we have quite a few more that uh, are uh, uh, going to open uh, soon. Okay. Um, we've uh, got a little bit of uh, exciting news uh, coming from the uh, Socorro aggressor. Do you want to give us an update on that? Yeah, so the score aggressor does uh, uh, the squirrel and uh, Guadalupe. And so right now they should be up um, in Ensenada doing the white cage uh, shark diving uh, out in Guadalupe. The problem is uh, the Mexican authorities have not opened the parks. So uh, while we could, uh, you can get in there and you can get out on the boat, uh, you can't go uh, to these parks. So it looks like uh, the parks will not open until right at the end of the season. So rather uh, than the boat uh, uh, be idle, uh, we're going to start running trips in the Sea of Cortez. So there's plenty of flights, especially from the U.S. down to um, Cabo San Lucas. Uh, the first trip is going to be the first, of first part of September. And uh, it, uh, the Sea of Cortez offers some amazing uh, uh, diving with uh, uh, huge schools of, of fish and mobula rays. And I, I think, Cole, you have a video to, uh, to show. I do. Would you like to show it now? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so we got this video made up yesterday. And uh, let's go ahead and give it a watch, guys. <laughs>
sign me up. Great, Cole. Thanks for showing that. So you can see, you see, Cortez has some amazing uh, marine life um, over there. And if you have not been over to that side um, of the Baja Peninsula, uh, the town of La Paz is just an amazing little tourist town that uh, has all these uh, uh, Mexican, uh, typical Mexican restaurants, open air restaurants on the on the beach. Uh, with some amazing uh, views of, of the terrain. It's, uh, I really enjoy um, going over to La Paz. Very cool, very cool. Well, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the destinations uh, you hear to be opening soon? <clears throat> All right, so uh, the destinations that uh, are opening uh, first September or in September are going to be Roatan, uh, Cayman, Costa Rica, Costa Rica, and a lot of these destinations are running now internally. They're not allowed to have some tourists come in, but they're running uh, local uh, charters. Uh, Costa Rica, uh, Galapagos is going to open, Sri Lanka, and Kona, Hawaii. Of course, all subject being pushed back or, or um, moved a week or so, um, as we've seen with uh, Bahamas. Uh, do you have any update on uh, the Philippines aggressor? Yeah, Philippines, uh, they've loosened uh, over in Cebu where the Philippines aggressor is. They've loosened some of the restrictions. So uh, as you can imagine, when um, a new yacht gets there, they have quite a bit of outfitting to do with with uh, linens and, and, and pots and pans and, and uh, uh, getting the crew uh, uniform. So they, that's, they've been gathering all that um, slowly. I've been able to get that in there with all the, the logo glasses and rugs and everything. So uh, they will be ready when uh, the uh, airports open up for tourism to start start running charters. Okay, great. We were really excited about that boat and that itinerary. There's two itineraries there. Uh, well, Wayne, give us a quick update on your Belize trip that's upcoming or was up yeah so september 20 i mean uh, excuse me august 22nd i was supposed to be on the uh, belize aggressor but they have announced uh last night and i'm not sure how much it's hit the news yet but uh they are going to push the opening back to the first of september so obviously that charter uh, is not going to go so we have two charters that were running uh the 15th and 22nd that will have to uh, take down and, and move those people to uh, to a different week or a different destination. Uh, there there is a room that week on the uh, few spaces on Turks and Caicos Aggressor, uh, so I'm gonna try to uh, see if I can move my flights um, over to that destination. What's the dates of that trip again for Turks that you're gonna switch over to? August twenty second. August twenty second. All right. And um, the next thing on our list here is a little bit about the Wild Harvest show in the background. Yeah, so we're really excited to partner uh, long term with uh, Les Stroud, Survivor Man. He's been a great um, advocate um, for us <clears throat> and a great addition to the trips he's on. He's very personable, loves to socialize with the guests. Um, he's a huge uh, musician, so he puts on a little concert once or twice during the week at night. Uh, and then, of course, has amazing stories to tell. He's created a new uh, PBS series show called Wild Harvest. And it's about uh, foraging and gathering uh, in the wild and having a chef create a uh, five-star meal out of it. It's a great concept. Uh, the promos uh, that they've shot for it for the first few episodes are, are pretty amazing. I think it's going to be a huge hit. So let's ask if he could um, uh, shoot a couple of the shows uh, on board one of the vessels. So in February, uh, him and I <clears throat> and his film crew, along with our, um, our aggressor executive chef trainer, Edward Mendoza, are going to be on the Belize aggressor. And we picked February because it's uh, a, a, a lobster season and conch season. So while we can um, uh, sustainably collect some of those along with lionfish, crabs, uh, wild coconuts, I mean, a little bit of everything that Belize has to offer as long as, as, as well as going out to some of the outer islands where we can uh, maybe fish for um, some of the uh, local uh, uh, marine life out there um, and then shoot um, the show while we're doing this. So it's, it's going to be pretty amazing. He thinks he's going to do uh, be able to shoot enough to get two shows out of this one trip. 
So thinking about um, how exciting uh, our partnership is with him and, and this show is going to be, we decided to um, allow one customer to be along on the trip because uh, uh, they are really um, requesting that it's just a closed charter just so they can shoot this. So I talked to Les about having one customer on board and he was really excited and, and behind it. So we're actually launching a contest that launched uh, uh, at uh, midnight this morning uh, to have one customer win uh, a uh, it'll run for three weeks and there's multiple ways you can gain uh, entries there's nothing to buy um, you just have to do some social media sharing or watching some videos uh, but it's all in uh, uh, the email that uh, went out yesterday um, and you can also find it uh, on uh, on our social media pages on um, ways to enter. Okay, We're really excited about that uh, about that charter. Very cool. And um, Wayne, I don't know. If we didn't talk about this earlier, but I I did pull that video up. If you'd like us to show that, if we're allowed to. Yeah, the wild harvest. Yeah, it's a private video on this Vimeo link. Yeah, that's that's fine. He said it's it's fine to uh, to share. Okay, perfect. Let me go ahead and share screen one more time here. American Public Television and Wild Harvest Productions are proud to present Wild Harvest, a nationally broadcast 13-part series for PBS. Season 1 premieres fall 2020. Be part of this epic and unparalleled series which celebrates local foraging and gathering available to each and every one of us. I'm your host, Les Stroud, also known as Survivor Man, and along with world-renowned chef Paul Rogalski, I'll take you on journeys to the forests, deserts, and neighborhoods of North America to discover the wonderful smorgasbord of wild edibles available to us all. Wild Harvest helps us to safely discover the sumptuous flavors as well as the beauty that is an integral part of local foraging. Whether you're hiking, camping, or grilling out in your own backyard, you will learn how to turn a wonderful afternoon of foraging into an evening meal that will make you the envy of all. That is phenomenal! Foraging is quickly becoming one of the fastest growing ways to enjoy organic, healthy, and delicious natural foods. Gathering from the wild celebrates the beauty and diversity of Earth's natural environments. Your sponsorship will reach over 1 million viewers weekly, covering the top 50 markets and penetrating 97% of U.S. households. Each episode is guaranteed a three-year run by American Public Television, resulting in thousands of repeat episodes nationwide on PBS stations and the Create TV network. Three levels of underwriter participation ranging from $100 to $500,000 are available. Your underwriting sponsorship of Wild Harvest will include five 15 or 30 second spots at the opening and close of all 13 episodes, logos and links on the Wild Harvest website, custom tailored social media campaigns to fit your marketing strategies, personalized product testimonials, free use of B-roll footage, personal appearances by Les Stroud, Chef Paul Rogalski, and James Beard nominated producer Kevin Kosowin. Cross promotion at other Les Stroud, Paul Rogalski, or Kevin Kosowin events. And yes, we are wide open to location ideas and collaboration, though certain PBS restrictions apply. What this means is, you want to see a show shot in Florida? We can do that. Colorado? We'll be there. Oregon? We're on our way. Wild Harvest is an experiential journey to promote local environments and culture nature stewardship and celebration, as well as a celebration of the palate. A few minutes of paddling, a few minutes of hiking, and I'm coming back with bags full of local foods that Chef Paul can turn into an amazing dish. This truly is the essence of the wild harvest. All right, thanks Cole for sharing that. So as you can see, that was his, his initial promo uh, reel, but it gives you a great idea what the show is. And of course, you know, you decide you want to be a $500,000 underwriter, give him a call. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, we talked there about the Gleam uh, contest. Um, so yeah, so that's that's it, Wayne. Uh, let me run through here see if we got any uh, any questions. You did cut out a little bit talking about the Gleam, uh, your audio for about five to ten seconds. Um, tell us one more time how they can get signed up for that. So the uh, the sweepstakes, and, we, and and just so you know, we say Gleam because Gleam is the 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 uh, background software we use that supports the sweepstakes. Okay. But uh, the sweepstakes started this morning. Uh, runs for three weeks, and uh, there's multiple ways for you to enter. And if you go to the to the website or our social media, you can see, or if you got the email yesterday. Uh, you click on it, it gives you all the ways to enter. So there's nothing to purchase. You uh, you either uh, share some of our social media or you view a couple of videos, uh, go to some of Les's uh, YouTube sites uh, and some of his social media sites, and it gives you multiple ways uh, to get entries. And there's several that you can do every day, uh, plus some bonus entries. So you're able to click out there every day and add more entries to your um, to your contest. Yeah, very cool stuff. All right, Wayne. Well, I appreciate you taking time to speak with us today. Absolutely. Happy, happy to uh, share some of uh, what's going on with Aggressor Adventures. All right. Well, ho hopefully we'll get, get to do one of these here in maybe another month or so and have a coffee with a uh, cup of Joe with the CEO, what we'll call it. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it and enjoy your day. Take care. Bye-bye.